What's going on, you guys? It's Scott from Fly Rides back again today with another electric bike review. 2021 bikes are finally coming out, which means I get to review more bikes. Hooray! That means I'm riding around all day, and today I am checking out the Gazelle Medeo T10 Plus. This is a 28 mile per hour commuter, a class three Bosch generation four performance speed motor that was pretty impressive. In addition to those class three speeds, you've got Dutch design from Gazelle. They have some of the most refined designs in the electric commuting bike market, all for a price of just $34.99. So pretty impressive stuff just right out the box. But of course we have to check out a full review like this video you guys and subscribe to this channel the fly rides electric bikes channel so that you can stay up to date on all the goings on in the electric bike world because i got the hot gas for you and you're not going to want to miss it if you are interested in e-bikes let's check out the gazelle Medeo t10 plus You guys know what we do first in these videos. Let's talk about specs, baby. Let's talk about specs, baby. Headlining this bike is going to be the Bosch Generation 4 Performance Speed Motor with 85 newton meters of torque because you are going to have that new software from Bosch that gives you that 85 newton meters, making this one of the strongest motors on the market. All in a class three package, meaning you are getting speeds up to 28 miles per hour. This Bosch motor specifically is also assisting you even more from 20 to 28 miles per hour than you were getting on previous generations. So a really solid setup. You're getting a 500 watt hour battery, the Intu battery from Bosch as well. This is a great setup for a commuter. It keeps weight down, a little bit less heavy than the 625 watt hour battery, but it is plenty of watt hours for most commuters. If you're going between 30 and 50 miles a day, you're probably only gonna have to charge that battery up at the end of the day. So pretty solid setup for most commutes. Uh, that's gonna be good for you. Honestly, if you're commuting further than that, you gotta move closer to that job, dude. It's gonna improve your quality of life. This is all tied together with one of my favorite displays, the Bosch Perion display. You just have a little thumb display off to the side there. You don't need a ton of information. It's gonna give you what level you're in, how much battery you have left and all that, and how fast you're going. So Bosch Perion display for me is plenty. Gazelle has also set you up with a Shimano Dior derailleur, 10 speeds on this, an 11 to 42 tooth cassette in the back. This is a pretty standard setup for bikes in this price range. Um, and there's a reason it's a standard setup is because it works pretty well, so I'm into it. The group set is rounded off with four piston hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano, which is not something you see on most commuters in this price range. You're getting four piston hydraulic disc brakes on this on a 180 millimeter rotor in the front and a 160 in the back, which means you're gonna have incredible stopping power, which is nice when you think about the power that that Bosch class three motor is going to give you and the speeds you're likely gonna be traveling at. So that is how that group set is rounded out. It's gonna be a full Shimano setup. On the comfort side of things, they have always been very good, Gazelle has. You have that adjustable stem, it's the same one that comes on the uh, level up from this one, the Gazelle Ultimate T10 Plus. This is a very useful thing to have, especially, I don't know if you're sharing between a couple people, but it just gives you a built-in way to adjust it to your liking. A lot of people switch over, especially on commuters, to adjustable stems, so it's nice just to have it right out of the box. You're also getting a Suntour Moby fork with 63 millimeters of travel up front there, which is going to be plenty for a commuting bike. And then you're still getting pretty wide tires. So they're not the plus size tires that some people have been kind of into lately. But what I like about Gazelle is they're not doing the plus size tires. When I'm commuting, I want something a little bit quicker. These are nice. They're the Schwalbe Big Apple with some extra added puncture protection. They're still 50C wide, it's 1.97 inches. So still some decent comfort on there, but you're not uh, losing so much speed as you do on some of the really like fat tire commuters, which uh, I don't know if it's always necessary. Some people like it, not necessarily for me. Of course, as Gazelle is wont to do, they have sprinkled in all sorts of little extra amenities for you. Don't take these for granted because a lot of people don't do them. Uh, the ones I always like to point out are those Ergon grips. You're getting the GP1 grips on here, which are super comfortable. Probably my favorite features though are the integrated lights front and rear from AXA, and of course, a cafe lock. You guys know I love a cafe lock. It's so convenient if you're just leaving the bike 
outside for just a second just to hop inside you're gonna have an eye on it but you just don't want someone to wheel away with it you're getting unpacked whatever it is I love a cafe lock so I really dig that they're still throwing these on there and also if you're locking your bike up long term it's just a nice added security feature that you're not really paying extra for in the back, you've got the rear carrier from MIK. This is going to be a system that you can get accessories that kind of lock on there from MIK. That MIK rack can carry up to 60 pounds of weight as well, which is huge. This is another thing that Gazelle also does very well is they always find racks that can carry a ton of gear because the realities are that you're going to be carrying a lot of gear if you're commuting by e-bike. The frames are gonna come in a standard step over frame and a mid step. That's the one behind me right here. That is what I rode. The frame sizes should fit riders anywhere from five foot three to about six foot three. And you probably have a little bit of wiggle room on either end of the spectrum there as well. So pretty solid setup for a wide variety of riders. And again, for $34.99, it is definitely competing with that Gazelle Ultimate T10 Plus. But of course, you can't just build a bike around specs. It's got to ride really well. So let's break into the ride review, talk a little bit more about it. So to be totally honest, I can sum up the ride experience pretty quickly for you. It's good. See you later. Just kidding, but it is a really good ride. I would say both the Gazelle Ultimate T10 Plus and the Gazelle Medeo T10 Plus both represent probably the best value, the bang for your buck value in terms of ride feel on the market right now. So $34.99 for the Medeo T10 Plus and the Gazelle Ultimate T10 Plus is gonna be $39.99. But both of these bikes represent a solid value. Of course, we're talking about the Medeo T10 Plus today. The handling feels smooth and agile, but not at the expense of having any squirreliness in the front, which is a pretty common problem, especially for bikes that keep you as upright as this bike can, especially with that adjustable stem. I definitely utilize that. It was really nice to be able to just bring it back a little bit, have the, my arms not so stretched out, but you can be in a more aggressive position as a result of the adjustable stem as well. If you wanna be, you just gotta put it a little bit more forward. The Bosch Generation 4 speed motor, even more incredible, obviously, with the 85 newton meters of torque. It basically makes hills negligible at this point. You don't even feel them. The 10 speed derailleur, you know, maybe you would want an 11 speed or something like that. But again, with the Bosch Generation 4 motor, you don't really need it. 11 to 42 is plenty. Gazelle designs are always incredible. I have been a fan for years. It's the bike I own. I still have a Citizen T10 speed. They look like standard bikes, which is always an added bonus to me. I think a lot of people, you know, they want their bike to blend in. Maybe some people are like, you know, they like that boxy look of uh, certain bikes, but I really like the Gazelle. It's like a refined look to it. You just feel like, you know, you're on a standard bike, which I really appreciate. There's other things within the design that you might not think about if you haven't ridden a ton of electric bikes, but I can tell you, for instance, the stainless steel fenders that are like automatically sized already. There's not any sort of uh, like on the SKS fenders where you gotta kind of finagle them every now and then. They are just standard. They're not gonna move around on you. They fit the bike exactly right. It's nice to have those stainless steel fenders in there. The rack, again, I'll, uh, I'll mention that again. 60 pounds is an incredible amount of weight and definitely something you would want. And then just overall, just the things that they pay attention to, again, grips and all that. It just shows that they really care for attention to detail and uh, they're not just kind of flopping a bike together and just uh, shooting it out into the market. They really think about these things. So really appreciate that from Gazelle. One thing I will mention is they switched to a bottom loading battery. Uh, might have been a cheaper design, might be my guess. Um, you do have to be very careful with this battery cover. You really got to make sure it's in there properly on, like give it a good tug before you go for a ride because you don't want that falling off mid-ride. It's something that a lot of the, the bottom loading battery covers have had. It's not a problem if you know how to put the battery cover on there. You just gotta put it in there super hard and crank it down correctly, and you just gotta know that it's on there before you go. So there's really not a reason not to buy this bike that I can think of. Again, $34.99 when you look at comparable bikes from Trek, for instance, you're looking at like an additional $3,000 for a very similar, if not completely similar bike. 
So you're saving a ton of money by going from Gazelle. I don't know how they have a <laughs> class three commuter at this price. It's not common at all. I mean, even like when it was gen two motors, it's generally gonna be at least $39.99. So the cost on this one alone is enough to uh, get you interested. I mean, you should definitely be considering this bike if you are looking at class three commuters. The only thing that I would say that kind of compares to it in terms of price range and performance, again, is that Ultimate T10 Plus. So you've got some decisions to make there. There's a better derailleur on the T10 Plus and stuff like that. It just depends on uh, where you find, like, you know, where, where you think the important differences are. So if it's worth it to you to have, uh, you know, slightly better derailleur and uh, definitely some better integrated lights and stuff on the Ultimate T10 Plus, spend the extra $500 and go with that. But if you're just looking to kind of break into the market, you're not gonna do much better than $34.99 on the Medeo T10 Plus. It rides great, it's specced out well, and Gazelle has a really solid tradition of making reliable, comfortable, I mean, just rideable bikes that you're gonna love riding and you're gonna wanna ride every day. So I highly recommend the Medeo T10 Plus. Again, I know I've said this four times, but that price point, you just cannot beat it. Like this video, you guys, and subscribe to the Fly Rides Electric Bike channel. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're thinking about grabbing this bike. If you have any questions for me, I did ride it for about a month. So, uh, yeah, I guess you could say I know my way around it. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. And until then, enjoy the ride.